what was I saying? I was saying that there's no such thing as sideways of a molecule, but that's what you kind of, that's the way I kind of think about it. You know, is you're kind of looking at it sideways and then you can tell that there's a difference. So it's almost like you're standing and you're looking at the molecule like this or something. Anyhow, that's neither here nor there. But hopefully that helps you out a little bit. And it really shows you how having a model kit in organic chemistry can be pretty darn helpful. The methoxy does count, absolutely. Um, the methoxy, okay, the three protons in the methoxy are all chemically equivalent, right? Because by definition, whenever you have three protons in a methyl group, they're, a, they're chemically equivalent. All right, so we've got this methoxy, or we've got the methyl group in the methoxy, but that is different than, let's say, this methyl group over here, right? These two methyl groups are in different electronic environments. So, so far, we've got one, two, three types of protons, okay? Then you have another methyl group over here, son of a gun. You have another methyl group over here and another methylene. These are in unique environments. So each of these is in a unique environment. The one that's in blue, and I'll just keep recycling my colors here, but this one in green, that's in a unique environment, okay? And then what about the three protons that are on the aromatic ring? Could anybody tell me, are any of these protons on the aromatic ring equivalent? Kind of run out of space there. Would any of those be equivalent? Right, none of them are equivalent. There's no reflectional symmetry and there's no rotational symmetry. So you have three unique protons. Okay, so I'll just use different colors here. So how many total signals do we have here for this compound? We have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight signals. So we have a total of eight signals. And so the answer is eight signals like that. There you go. Any questions about that one? Just give me a thumbs up if you follow me. If you don't, feel free to ask me a question. Oops, I can't see. Hold on. I'm having computer troubles here. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so I just want to address one more thing before we move on. This is just kind of an interesting thing here. It's like when you look at a molecule like this, okay? I'm going to go back to a blank page here, and I want to show you something. Let me find a little room here. So we talked about rotating this molecule around, right? You have OCH3. And then we had these two protons, okay? And we said that those two protons are chemically equivalent because of rotational symmetry. So this is where I don't want you to get fooled because I see a few people are mentioning the methoxy, right? If you rotate this, okay, if you were to literally flip that over like a pancake, you'd end up with this, okay? Where you'd have one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here, the oxygen here, then you'd have Right, if you were to literally write down the mirror image, okay, you'd have that. That's the mirror image, okay? But remember, there's free rotation around this bond, right? There's total free rotation around that bond. So this is the same thing as writing it out, okay, like this, okay? It means the exact same thing, right? Because we have free rotation around that bond. If that, if you're still, if it still isn't clear for you, I mean, what if you wrote it out like this? If you had all your pi bonds and then you said oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, 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 like that. Okay, that's a methoxy group. Now, if you rotate it around, right, now you can clearly see that the mirror image is identical. Okay, so don't be fooled just because the methoxy is over on one side. I mean, those are just letters that we use to represent atoms. If you shrink yourself down to the atomic level, I've never done this, okay? And I'm never gonna do it in my lifetime, but if I could, um, if I could sh shrink myself down, I guarantee you that there's, no car that there's no letter C's and there's no letter H's and there's no letter O's. Well, good, Kelly, I'm glad that that helped, good. All right, 
All right, Ant Man. Yeah, it would be cool to go down and and see you know things at the atomic size, but unfortunately we're unable to do that. Anyhow, all right, good. I'm glad that clears things up. Anything to to clear things up for my students. And again, it's not easy, is it? If it was easy, as I know, you know what I'm going to say. Right at the end of this class, at the end of any class with me, you could always write a a short novella, you know, of Mr. Dion's sayings. Right, and one of them is. If it was easy, anybody on the street could do it, and it's not easy, okay? Let's look at the next molecule. I'm going to redraw it because I don't know why I pasted these in so they're so dang close to each other. Why don't I just go back to my blank document, and we'll, and we'll take a look at it there. So let's find some space. And the molecule is this. This would be called paramethylanosole would be the name of the compound. That's neither here nor there, though. And we've got a methyl group down here okay first question this is not meant to be a difficult question i just want to test you guys this methyl there's two methyl groups in the compound right there's a methyl group i'm highlighting in yellow and one i'm highlighting in green are those two methyl groups chemically equivalent yes or no would those be chemically equivalent yes or no are they in the same electronic environment No, they're in a very different environment, right? If I was to rotate this molecule, if I was to flip it this way, then I'd end up with this, right? Where I'd have a methyl group up here, and then I have a methoxy group down here. So these are not the same at all, okay? If you think about it another way, okay, think about the actual environment that those protons are in, okay? If I'm gonna draw the molecule a little bit bigger, so if I have this carbon and I've got one, two, three hydrogens attached, then here I've got an oxygen and I've got a carbon and I've got one, two, three hydrogens attached. I mean, you can do a couple of different things and I'm not kidding here. You could actually imagine yourself standing here, right? The environment that you're in, look, you see the carbon, but then you see an oxygen next. Whereas if you were to take yourself and go all the way down here, right, you see you see a carbon, you know, next to where you're standing, but you don't see an oxygen. So they're in different environments. Does that help a little bit? Another way to think about it is, remember, we're always talking about the amount of electron density surrounding the hydrogen, right, around the nucleus. Well, these three protons that I'm highlighting in yellow, these three are going to experience a lot more electron withdrawing effects from this oxygen that's gonna have a strong dipole, right? Because oxygen is the second most electronegative element in the periodic table. Whereas these three in green down here, they are not gonna be feeling as strong an electron withdrawing effect, okay? Because they're in a different environment, okay? Right, the three, the three protons in green are all chemically equivalent. The three protons in yellow are all chemically equivalent but the protons in yellow and the protons in green are not chemically equivalent. Okay, cool. All right, awesome, awesome. So let me erase this thing here, okay? Now, on my... Oh, wow, that's great. Okay. Now, so what time does it end? Okay. Sorry about that interruption from my family. Um, yeah, so here, I have a question for you guys. And again, it's not an easy question, but I want you to think about it really hard. If I have these four protons on the aromatic ring highlight that I've all drawn in black, how many types of protons are there the aromatic protons that i have in black are all four of them unique are there three types yes absolutely there are two types of protons here right there's two types of aromatic protons there's the ones that i'm highlighting in blue if i could find my blue highlighter and then there's the ones that i'm highlighting in i don't know i'll use red okay how did you know that bruno right because i'll draw them in here right? 
if I draw these two protons and these two protons, the two that I'm highlighting in blue are identical, are chemically equivalent, and the two that I'm highlighting in red, yes, exactly. You guys follow me 100%, right? Why? Because you know that there is an axis of rotational symmetry here. If you rotate that 180 degrees, nobody would be able to distinguish between those two protons and nobody would be able to distinguish between those two protons. However, the reason that the ones in blue are different from the ones in red, why? Because if you try to draw a line here and rotate that, there is no rotational symmetry that way. Kapish Kapash, give me a thumbs up if you're like, uh, if you're having a bit of an aha moment. I don't expect you to understand everything the first time I say it and you're like, you know what, Mr. Dion, just I'm gonna leave class because I know everything, okay? But as long as you follow me part of the way. Okay, cool. Awesome. Kind of neat, huh? Once you start to get the hang of it, you know, identifying which protons are the same and which protons are different. So what's the answer to this is 15.5B? The answer is that there's one, two, three, four. So there's four types of protons. So we would see four signals in the proton NMR. Okay? Let's try the last one. I'm gonna just throw it out there for you. So this is 15.5C. I love that you guys don't look at the solutions manuals. You're always trying, you know, you're like give it to me. I'll, the hard way we'll figure it out. Okay, so this this compound has a, has a common name. It's called para-xylene. It's neither here nor there. But uh, I've got two methyl groups here, here. Okay, if I just was to ask you flat out, Based off what you've seen so far, could anybody tell me how many signals you would see? And just guess, if you're not 100% sure, go with your gut, okay? Would anybody be able to tell? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, absolutely, okay? My students have all figured it out. The answer is two. You would only see two signals here. Two signals. Why? Can I ask you a different question? How many axes of rotational symmetry are there in this molecule? How many? How many axes of rotational symmetry? Exactly. There's two of them, aren't there? Yep. 100%. 100%. There's an axis of rotational symmetry this way, but there's also one this way. Right, there's an axis of rotational symmetry that way. All right, there you go. Kind of cool, huh? So what are the signals, right? We know that these two methyl groups are chemically equivalent, but we also know that this time, all four aromatic protons, they're all chemically equivalent. And so we only see two signals. Awesome, that is fantastic. I'm glad you guys really seem to follow me on that. So what would you wanna do if you're you know, not 100% sure? about all this, you're gonna to have to do some more practice problems. You know, another thing you can always do is a replacement test, that works. But you see how if you're able to identify the axis of rotational symmetry and the plane of reflectional symmetry, it makes things a little easier, it definitely does, okay? Now look, if I make a model of this compound, I'm gonna make one really quickly here, so just give me a second. So let me just go back to my camera here. Just give me two shakes of a lamb's tail. Just jump back here. There. So here's that compound that we were just looking at. Here it is. So this is, it's called para-xylene, okay? You see that you have an axis of rotational symmetry this way. And then you have one going this way, okay? Another thing you have is you have the plane of symmetry too, right? I mean, it's, let me figure it out like that. But there's a plane of symmetry in the molecule too, which again, it's harder for me to demonstrate with a model, but hopefully that clears it up. So yeah, models can be really powerful, really, you know, there's a reason that there's people that are literally experts in molecular modeling. I actually worked with a lady who was an expert in molecular modeling and I would sometimes go into her office and she would have 